What's up, guys? Good afternoon. I am Mike. And I'm Coach Jonathan. Guys, we're here. Episode number 15. We're doing it big today. Cruising. What I want to talk to you guys about today is, hey, I just started or I just signed up for a new fitness program. Uh, we do CrossFit, so we'll probably reference that specifically, like how we do, do stuff here at OIL. But I just joined. I started OIL. I'm attending my first class tomorrow. Like, what would I expect in class? What might I expect over the coming weeks, months, years? Is there a timeline? What should I focus on or not focus on? So I, what we wanted to do today is we wanted to break down some of those questions, give you a set of generalized expectations. So you kind of know the path forward in uh, your fitness, your time at OIL, um, but ultimately your health is what we usually talk about. So I want to start with the, the broader version of that question. Uh, for Jonathan. So Jonathan usually sits down with people, gets them signed up. He usually works on getting them uh, onboarded and making sure they're uh, here and attending and, use, and using our product and doing what, uh, doing what they need to for their health. So if somebody signs up, then maybe they came to the class today, maybe their first class is tomorrow. Like what should they expect in their first class experience, but maybe even their first week? Let's start there. Like what, what are general expectations? If I'm starting a new fitness program at OIL, what are my expectations for like my first day or week or so? Yeah, so so I do sit down with most people when they come in and get started. And what we talk about is, hey, like your first week, you know, we run a structured class. So like when you come to class, there's going to be a structure. Like we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the workout. We're going to warm up together. And the goal of the warm up would be to, you know, increase range of motion, get the blood flowing, prepare the body for movement. And then we do some teaching and progression where we actually review the movements that we're doing for the day, break them down, correct how people move. And then we move towards the workout. So we may be doing different loads or using different pieces of equipment. So we get that stuff set so we can do the workout and then, you know, fist bumps and high fives. Now that's the way a class runs. But what I tell people is like, Hey, like your first week, like like there's a structure to it. So, you know, you, the coach is going to guide you through it. But if you're new to this, like you might be doing movements you've never done before, uh, workout styles you've never done before. And the big key in the first week is, is just showing up. And so understanding that, you know, you might not know what a movement is. We'll show you. You'll see other people doing it. So you'll become more aware. It's not like we just say do it and then expect you to do it. So uh, even though we do those things, it can kind of feel like, hey, I don't really know what's going on just yet, but we, we build our program so that there's like a consistent structure day to day. So it's not like a confusing structure because we realize like, you know, the exposure to new stuff can be a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit, uh, overwhelming because all of it might be new. You may have never done it before. And so that's why we say focus on showing up is we'll take care of the rest. We'll make sure that everything you do is, is safe and loaded properly and, and doable but that's kind of what it's like your first week, like just rely on the structure, but know that, yeah, you're going to be learning a lot, seeing a lot of new stuff. Um, but we have plenty of time to understand all of that. We'll make sure that everything is happening as it needs to be. What about like, like physically, like being sore? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be hungrier? Like, like, should I be worried about something different in my nutrition? Like, like this, like, like what should I expect coming home from my first workout or kind of within that first week? What? What would that look like? Good question. So first off, you know, if you haven't been working out and using certain ranges of motion, when you get back into the gym and use it, you will be sore. And so that's because your tissues are not used to that range of motion and uh, that level of activity. So that's why we, we, we call it uh, scaling or tailoring the workout. That's why we want to make it a little bit easier because we know that that's going to happen. So you'll be a little sore, but that's just an indicator that we're using musculature in ranges of motion we don't normally use. Um, and so, so you'll be sore. Uh, you'll probably feel thirsty. I mean, some people, it's not uncommon to see like a two to three pound weight gain in your first week of training because as you're using your musculature, your body's like, hey, we need more water in the cells to actually utilize our musculature at the level our body is now demanding because you're doing this thing you weren't doing. So your body's like, hey, let's suck some water in there. So like you may retain water. So like you even may, may even see the scale go up because of that, but that's your body responding to getting into physical activity. Um, and, and you may feel hungry. And what you might find is like if you're eating what we would consider like a low nutrition diet, 
you know, foods that are not necessarily the best fuel for physical activity, you may find yourself hungry more frequently because your body's actually really asking for the nutrients to recover from training. So like you may see an increase of appetite, but you may even see that your current diet doesn't satisfy you. And that's your body again, trying to adapt to this new state that you're putting it in. Um, you may feel a little more tired the first couple of days, but you will probably find you'll be a little more mentally clear, uh, a little more alert and awake during the day. And then your sleep quality will probably start to go up because there's a huge cascade of hormonal response when you train. So like your body will, it, when, when you train and introduce stress in a physical way, that helps you handle some of the stressors that are more mental and psychological and emotional. And that helps your body go into like your rest and digest nervous system. So you, you see quite a few of those things happen you, really fast. Yeah. So that's my next question is like, when, when does some of that stuff start to change? Like, is that a day one thing I start seeing some of this stuff change? Is this more of a month or a year or when, when, do, maybe not when do I start seeing results, mm -hmm. but like when, like when do some of those other factors in it, like really kicks my body into start the adaptation process process? Yeah. So like month one, you know, you'll start being much less sore session to session for sure. That, that'll happen in like one or two weeks just because it's just your body getting used to it. Um, the hydration, if you start picking up on it and maintaining it, you know, you'll feel, you'll get used to consuming more water. Uh, now, the sleep quality can be pretty quick as well. So, so you, you might, might experience that in your first month. That might be night number one. Yeah, that might be day number one that you'll just be like, man, I just slept like a rock last night because you might not be doing anything to create that hormonal response that helps you recover. So, but month one, what you'll really notice is like you, you'll notice the feeling of your capacity increasing. So like when you're actually working out, like you being able to do a little bit more or you're able to, you know, manage your breathing a little better or I you have, didn't have to sit down in the middle of the workout. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause it only takes one to two weeks to start having what's called an aerobic response, meaning like your body gets better at getting oxygen in, into your tissues and then getting CO2 out. That's your respiratory endurance. And so like that happens and you'll start to feel that. Um, and, and also you might start to like experience increases in range of motion. So like your squat depth or your ability to hinge or instead of your arms being in front of you a little bit, actually closer to overhead. I did the thing on video if you're not watching, but those things you'll start to see in, in like the first month. But really when you start getting into like month two and three, that's where we start to see the actual body composition changes start to occur. So you're, you're stressing your musculature. And if we start to improve nutrition to feed that musculature to grow, you'll start muscle mass will slowly start increasing but because of increased activity plus increasing your muscle mass and your joints, your tendons, your ligaments and bones demands for rest restoration, like you'll start seeing a decrease in body fat. And that's because your body will use that when it no longer has other things present for energy. And so that's really like a two, three month. And that's where we see people say things like, man, my shorts are getting kind of loose, you know, or like the arms in my shirt are starting to get kind of tight. Like, uh, or the, the, the legs of your pants uh, are getting small uh, because the, that musculature is starting to grow and the body composition change. So that's more like a two to three month thing. But, you know, especially people who like say they're not currently working out early morning, like after two to three months, it'll be very normal. Like your body will wake up, you know, say you're training at six and you're waking up at five, but prior to that, you were waking up at 630. Your first like two weeks You'll feel kind of groggy getting up an hour and a half earlier, but after two to three weeks and especially into that two to three month, you'll actually kind of like wake up right around five because your circadian rhythm is changing. So now you're like, you like kind of wake up and it, you'll already be more aware and awake and alert when you wake up. So that's really like the two to three month. And so, you know, that's the, where, when people kind of say, when do I see results? Like when they ask me that, that's when I say, Hey, like those types of results. Yeah. That's like two to three months, especially well in the context of your doing it regularly. So we're talking like three, four, five days a week here. Um, but that's, that's really what you would expect like two to three months down the road. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, okay. We're a couple months in, we're starting to see some of those changes. My clothes are fitting differently. 
So I know something's going on, right? I'm probably, you know, doing a little bit of muscle fat loss. Uh, let's say our most common, our most common goal or, uh, fitness objective tends to be fat loss. Mm -hmm. If that starts changing in the two, three month range, let's say specifically I'm only doing classes. I'm not doing anything absurdly different with my nutrition or other places. Mm -hmm. What would, what would maybe like that, uh, timeline look like? Like if I start changing in month two and three, what if I'm trying to lose 10 pounds or 20 or 30, like what's a timeline ex expectation for that? Yeah. Well, I, three months for 10 pounds, I think is doable. Uh, I mean a healthy, it just, it's yeah, kind in of a, a, thrown, in a healthy way. Yeah. It's a thrown around term, but like one pound of fat per week, you know, is like what was considered like a steady loss. And, and there's ways that people get to that number. But the idea is like, most of the time, if you crash diet, you can drop your weight really fast, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're losing body fat. Normally, that's at the expense of hydration and musculature too, and you don't really want to do that because those are very important for your long-term health. So like if you're trying to, hey, I want to lose, say, 20 pounds of body fat, you know, one, one pound per week is 20 weeks. That's about five months. But like that's an acceptable goal uh, because when you increase your activity level, it'll stabilize usually any weight gain you have going on if you don't make any changes in nutrition and it'll help that come down. But if we do start making some nutritional changes, we can usually do that a little faster um, because we'll eat more of the things that fuel the muscle growth and development and less of the things that um, cause more stored body fat. But that's nutrition. Another less talked about thing is when you work out, it creates a hormonal response. It helps you deal with some of the stress or hormones in your body so that when you actually go to sleep, you sleep more deeply. And if you sleep more deeply and you have a little bit better sleep time, you actually produce more growth hormone and testosterone. So even just from training, your sleep can actually produce more of the things that help your tissues grow and develop, which helps increase the amount of fat that you would burn over time. Now, again, this isn't like about like, uh, I hate thermogenesis supplements. They're like the ones that like really elevate your heart rate and they, they, yeah, that will increase some calorie burn, but it's not good for your, it's not good for your nervous system. It's not good for your heart. So when I say it'll increase fat burn, what I'm saying is that it puts your body in a state where your body needs more fuel to recover. And so that, you know, losing 20 pounds in 20 weeks, that's a great, you know, it's a very common thing, but normally if you do it that way, it's because you're changing your habits, which means you'll keep it off. So that's why when people come in with like, say 30, 40, 50 pound weight loss goals, and we have an in body scanner, so we can get real precise on, okay, you want to lose 50 pounds. What does that actually look like in terms of where it puts you at in a body fat percentage range, along with the amount of current muscle you have. So if someone's like, Hey, I want to lose 50 pounds. And I see on the in body, like, yeah, we actually do need to lose about 50 pounds of fat. I'm like, Hey dude, like, Let's do that this year. If it's faster, cool. But I don't like setting the intense expectation to where you feel like you're running up on a deadline because I actually want it to be as a result of your habits. So take whatever number you have and make that the amount of weeks, and that would be a great way to shoot for it. The actual key is not getting the fat off. It's that you're living in a way that's making you healthier than you are today. So like, as long as we're making progress and we're moving in the right direction, we're going to be healthier day by day. So like if we know that we're on the right path and that path is leading us to where we want to be, then that's good. So if it's going to take six months, cool. There's nothing wrong with that. And I tell people that when we go over their sheets and stuff like, hey, this is a six month type of thing. It's OK if it takes that long. You're OK. We're going to as long as we start doing the right behaviors, which to step back to the whole what do you focus on in the first month? Like you just focus on showing up because if you work out four days a week for the next year, you will make significant progress. And normally the other thing that we didn't talk about is when you start getting into physical fitness, you start becoming more aware of other stuff. Like, like the thirst thing, like you'll probably start drinking a little more water. You just feel thirstier because your body's like, Hey, we need it. And then you, because you're putting this effort, you're like, man, I'm waking up at 5am to go to the gym. All of a sudden you go to like make a certain decision about what food you're about to put in your mouth. All of a sudden you're like, man, I just did all that work to get up. I don't want to eat this right. Like, that awareness, that's hard to quantify, like what that actually does in the first one, three, six months, year, whatever. 
Okay, so uh, so that's kind of in the gym, workout, soreness, composition change. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not necessarily to speed up the composition change, though definitely it can contribute, but like just the overall long-term health goal. What else should I be focused on if I just started? What else should I be focused on after I get point, past the point that like, okay, I am showing up? And by what else, I mean, uh, like the other 23 hours of the day. So you got Mm -hmm. your hour in class, you're working out four or five times a week. You've got that part down, Mm -hmm. you know, so some you've getting some of the other changes, you're sleeping better, your circadian rhythms kicked in, you're waking up at 5am for the example, like what, what are some of the other areas outside of the gym and the other 23 hours of the day? Where would I put my effort first once I've nailed the... I attend class four to five times a week. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'll kind of say a category and give you like just one thing you could do that would probably help you a lot in it. So uh, the first one um, I would focus on is sleep. Uh, We just need a certain amount of sleep per night to go through proper hormonal processes. And uh, like I was saying earlier, if you start working out at 6 a.m. and you start waking up at 5, even though you've been waking up at 6.30 or 7, eventually it'll change to where 5 a.m. is normal. Well, you also want to set a bedtime. So like we want to start regulating when we go to bed and when we go to sleep. And then once you dial that in, like you'll actually start to fall asleep at the same time and wake up at the same time. It'll actually be very uh, automatic. Like I get sleepy at about the same time every single night. And so, you know, we want to get into that. So the first thing I would say is like you're doing this working out. You are sleeping better. And then, you know, you're doing that. I would set a sleep and wake time. Just simply put, what time are you going to go to sleep and what time are you going to wake up? And that's like get in the bed, get out of the bed. You may not go to sleep right away because it takes some time for you know it, it to change. Best case scenario is you have an eight hour window. So like if you're going to wake up at five, lights out or at nine. You know, best case scenario, seven is still okay. We can work with that. I always shoot for seven thirty though because you'll actually get through one extra REM cycle if you try to get on the other side of that thirty minutes. So. Um, seven and a half, seven hours, but set a window and then try to just start hitting that. Just like you try to show up at the gym at a certain time, try to go to bed at a certain time. That is huge for sleep regulation. Uh, cause I think, and we'll, we'll, we'll go through a couple more here, other categories. Like the idea is like, okay, I'm telling you, Hey, you need to show up to class three to four days a week. Okay. So with sleep, like let's set a bedtime, set a wake time. All right. Um, nutrition, uh, most people, the number one thing, if you focused on it, that'll move everything forward for you. And especially, and, and the cool thing about body composition change is if you know what healthy ranges are, like, I think it's, a, I think people get unhealthy with body composition when it's all about like how they look. Nothing wrong with that inherently. But when you realize body composition is a good thing to track, cause there's like certain health markers that tend to be in a better place when a body composition is in a certain place. So it's cool to track. So like nutrition though, like almost every goal that anybody ever sits down with me, the protein is off. So like you have to have enough protein to grow musculature for your uh, joints to be healthy, um, for your organs to function properly. Like there's a lot of stuff. And then, and you know, with that is fat. So like animal protein is great because it's got fat and protein in it, right? So if you just go very blanket statement, we were just talking about this, one gram per pound of body weight. And if you're on a weight loss goal, what we would do is we would say like your target. So like if someone came in and say they're 200 pounds, but the in body, you know, based on getting them to a healthy body fat percentage range says they need to get down 50 pounds, that would be minus 50. That would put them at 150. So we would use 150 for that. So it's like not your current body weight. It's kind of like your target in the concept of where you're trying to go. If you just tried to hit in that scenario, 150 grams of protein per day, And that was the only thing you focus on in your nutrition. Actually, I would say you're trying to get that and every meal you eat it first. So like if you eat your protein first, every meal, like you eat your like six ounces of chicken or like six ounces of steak first and that, and you just knew you got that 150, you would probably drive really hard in the right direction. So with nutrition, making sure that protein is adequate for the activity level and like what you need to recover from. Uh, So that'd be nutrition. Hydration. Um, that is, uh, there's two parts of that. Number one is like, just get a water bottle 
it's very hard to track what you drink if you don't have a consistent unit of measurement. So like if you have like this water bottle, I think is 24 ounces or yeah, it's 24 ounces when you fill it up to this top rim. I have a thorn shaker bottle, like the blender bottle. So like when it's filled up to the lid, it's 24 ounces. So if I just drink through this and I calculate how many times I drink through it in a day, that lets me know how much water I'm drinking. So like just by, by measuring it and there's all kinds of, <laughs> there's all kinds of like ways that people do this, but Um, really most people, you know, that are under 200 pounds, you know, we're probably talking about hundred to 120 ounces a day, people over 200 pounds, probably a little bit more, but something like that, somewhere in that range. Uh, so to give you context, um, five of these would be 120 ounces. So like, I just know I drink through this in a day, five times. Um, that'd be a simple way to do it. Uh, and then just drink salt while you train. So elements, a version, thorn, catalyte, but you, your body does need electrolytes. If you start cleaning out how you eat, you're probably going to be dramatically reducing the sodium intake you have. And you need to replace that because your body needs it. So like you go get a bunch of fast food, it's all full of so- sodium. You start eating like, you know, grilled steak and, uh, you know, some sweet potatoes and green beans, unless you salt it a lot that the, the salt contents can be way down and you got to replace that. So something like an element packet, it's a thousand milligrams of sodium. Um, I always tell people to drink that while they're working out. Cause if you're actively sweating, you're also losing sodium, but you're replacing it. So you just drink some sort of electrolyte supplement with 500 to a thousand milligrams of sodium while you work out for an hour. Those would be, that would be hydration. Um, I'll say this, we, we got some more on a list here, but those would be the top three. Like if you're just like, Hey man, I got a lot going on. I don't know exactly what to think about. If you just dialed in those three, and by dialed in, I mean literally like just start with the basic and just try to do it every day. That will take you a long, long ways. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was going to be my next question, which was the me asking it just for you to say yes. But the first month we're talking about building habits, building the habit of showing up three, four, five times a week, depending on the person. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, work out history and what you're, what you can, what you can handle in a realistic way and recover from, but I'm building the habit of, let's just stick with the number four times a week in the first month. But after that, if I want to start adding in more things, which we should want to with long-term health, the next step, just to recap, next step is, uh, set a bedtime alarm and set, well, hopefully you're probably already setting a, <laughs> a alarm to wake up in the yeah. morning. If not, let's do that. Let's get on a schedule. Uh, But yeah, so number one, we're setting a bedtime and a wake time alarm. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, let's just focus on protein first. Uh, Getting in roughly your goal weight in pounds, change that to grams, and that's a grams of protein to get in. And then number three, uh, we want to hydrate that, including electrolytes, sodium being typically the number one. Mm Mm-hmm. Does anything else even matter in the first six months? Or like, does that carry me pretty solid for six months, 12 I mean, like, how long does that take me? So to give context, you know, quite a few people and really who we're talking about here is probably the person who hasn't been working out for a while. They realize they're on a pathway to health issues. The The reality is some of this or most of this is not being done, measured or in any sort of way. And if you just focused on these three for like a solid six months to where they basically were like automatic, you know, like they just happen every day, you would probably like not even know who you are six months because all of these things are going to affect your daily stress levels, your clarity of thought, how you feel in relationship to like what you eat. So like when you eat, are you like tired for an hour and you just can't think like, There's just so many things that this is going to improve that some of the other categories, like whether it's, you know, just general stress management relationships, like all these, like you're just going to be showing up so differently that my bet is if you just focused on those things, like working out consistently, sleep, hydration, nutrition, those basically like we talked about, I don't know, man, that's probably pretty good for six months. Like, I know that sounds simple, 
but man, you would have so much progress just by adjusting those and tweaking them to where they really fit well. Like, I know this sounds funny, but like my Google calendar, I try to block most things. Like I block sleep, but it's literally the same thing every single day. Like it's like 930 until five. Like that's the block of time that's in there. And it's like, it's funny, but like I get sleepy at that time. And then I usually wake up right before my alarm goes off anyways. And it's like, it's that simple. But when you dial that in, like this thing that gives you massive health benefits being automatic like it's it's already happening. You don't have to think about it. Yeah, I I saw a quote or a thought or I don't I don't know if it was a quote officially, but I saw a thought the other day that said, in every like right science fiction time travel movie, when you go back in time, they're always super concerned about like the main character is super concerned about like changing one tiny thing and then the ripple effect that it's going to wreck and mess up the whole future. <laughs> and so they, you know, what, right. And the rules of time travel That's is like, d- don't interact with anybody. Don't change anything or mm-hmm. something like that. Like, don't talk to anybody, you know, I don't know what the official rules are, but, mm-hmm. but they're terrified of going back in time, doing one minor tiny thing and then coming back to the present day and everything being different. But this person was talking about, is like, well, if we're that like scared of changing something, let's just say 20 years ago and what that would affect now, like, why can't I do something now and dramatically affect the 20 years from now thing? And so that, that that's one of my favorite thoughts I've seen in a long time, but mm-hmm. that's why this is so simple is, or it can be so simple is if I do these things consistently and I do them well, and I, and I just check the box for six months worth of mm-hmm. whatever, you know, 25 weeks worth or 26 weeks worth of this, I'm probably in a much, much better spot in terms of time traveling forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're an organism, you know, like we, there's a whole bunch of things and processes that are going on. And these things just lead to better processes that lead into other processes. Like the body is in multiple systems that work together. So anything we can do to put that in a better state, it's not just how we feel today, but like our bodies, we know, age better when they're in a better state, more optimal state, more frequently. So they're very simple, but that's what they do. They put you in a better state. The longer you stay in that state and maintain those levels, the healthier your body is. It's just like changing the oil in a car. Like the oil lubricates all the mechanical pieces and that's what allows them to continue moving without degrading. Now, if you don't change the oil, they will degrade. And then usually you lead to some sort of catastrophic failure, throwing a rod, cracking the head, you know, I'm talking car now, but like those are the pieces of the engine. And because there is no lubrication, it it catastrophically fails. And so it bodies that way, you know, like you can, you have some buffer, you can go a while, but eventually something's like that. So if you bring it back to a healthier state, like it can run more optimally longer. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. In conclusion, I'm starting off probably gonna be a little bit sore the first week or two, especially, it's going to get start to get better after that. Um, if I'm looking for body composition changes, maybe month two, month three, mm-hmm. it might not even be a number on the scale. It might more be a closed thing, right? Because yeah. we're trading muscle fat. Um, but to start to expedite that process and like the stuff I can focus on outside of the gym, number one, sleep, give yourself a bedtime, stick to it, set an alarm. Mm-hmm. Number two, protein, goal weight in pounds, convert that to grams. Well, don't convert it to grams, but use that number, (laughs) use that number in grams. And that's what you're trying to hit for your protein. And then uh, number three, hydration with electrolytes, specifically sodium. Let's do it. That's it, guys. Hey, we'll close it out there. Hope you guys have a good one. If you enjoyed it, share this with somebody else. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time. See ya.